It is a sound unlike anything you have ever heard. It's infectious. You can you you almost can't go away from it. It's light. It makes you want to move. It just hits your chest. It's so loud. It just knocks your breath away. They couldn't resist tapping their feet. Now it's no problem. Everybody in this area knows what to do when the steel band plays. I started playing in Planet Pan when I was in high school, um, and also in Pan Coalition in the summer times. I mean, I remember when I was in high school, and it was the first time that I'd ever seen anything like this, because I moved to Blue Hill um, right before I started, and it was just this new thing that was so exciting, something I'd never seen before. I think it's the novelty, it continues to be a novelty to so many people when we go out and play and it just kind of keeps us going. I like the steel drums, I think they like, they remind me of like Caribbean and stuff, I think they're really fun to listen to and to watch people play them. Whenever we're up here, if it's happening, we try to be there. The first thing I saw in the packet is that they were going to be playing tonight and I thought, oh, Monday night, I know where I'll be. I mean, sure, you can, you can imagine the sort of astonished uh, comments that we'd get from people walking up from the harbor in the fog or whatever, you know, in, in Maine with lobster boats all around and, is that, what, what am I hearing, you know, it sounds like a steel band and sure enough it was a steel band. They practiced in the boathouse down there in South Brooksville and they sat up on the post office steps every Monday night and performed for the tourists who came in on the, on the we, we started playing on Monday nights uh, in Brooksville because that's the night that all the schooners came in. And uh, so we did it initially for entertainment. I would, 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 wouldn't would really play in the band yet because I was so small, but I, I'd go around and fight the bad boys who came to smoke cigarettes back behind the alley, you know, between the church and the, and the market. And we'd gather old rotten apples and, and bamboo sticks, and we'd try to sneak up on them and throw rotten apples at them, and they'd chase us and harass us and grab us and pin us up against the wall and threaten us with our lives. In the early years of Atlantic Clarion Steel Band, um, we were a total novelty. This was in the 70s in Maine. Um, nobody much had even heard of a steel band, or maybe they'd been to on a cruise ship somewhere and went and played on the dock. But you know, it was, it was unheard of for in, in this area. But then on the on the more general community level, um, Flash is a charitable organization. Really, we're a nonprofit. We play. Um, for the fun of playing, and we've off, we've gotten into this thing where we do our Mondays, offer a, the Monday performance to any um, nonprofit organization in the in the area that needs to raise money and would like to have us play. So we did it initially for entertainment, um, but then we started getting requests to play gigs, which we did, and we started making money. We decided that the best way to do that would be to form a nonprofit. Certain times we've given it our, our money actually to GSA because we, you know, through their uh, kindness uh, use that pan room for more than just the classes. Almost every evening I have a feeling that we're listening to this. Planet Pan was, when I was in it, did a lot of work in uh, local elementary schools and high schools around the state. We would go and teach workshops. Um, for the kids there, teach them about not only music, but kind of the culture of Trinidad and Tobago, which was a really neat experience for them. And for us, I think, to be of that age and working, teaching other kids your own age um, was a really cool thing. We're raising money for other groups. We make money ourselves, which then funds you know, the younger, the younger people. So, you know, there may be kids in, in, in Planet Pan who've never played any kind of musical instrument. But it was really the kids that got it going, because they, they, um, 
they, they jumped in and, and uh, got kind of excited. I got into this in about 1974. I started trying to figure out how to make steel drums just without any direction. Didn't, I'd seen them in the Caribbean and so forth. But we, when I was first making them, we were do, it was all being done by hand. Um, big hammers, which I can show you inside, but we had, we'd set them on that uh, concrete slab there and strap it down with the chains and then go at it and it would take, you know, most of a day to get one sunk down and it was pretty strenuous. After a lot of years and I found out a lot more about it and I got a lot older and I wasn't too happy about using those big hammers all the time. I learned of these air hammers that we now use inside. The first stage, which is called sinking, um, which is taking the flat end of the barrel and beating it down into a, into a bowl shape. I put this template on there and mark the positions of the different notes and then lay those patterns on and trace around them. That gives me the correct size for, for each note. And it's each of those little bubbles that uh, has a different pitch and gives you the different sounds on, on the steel drum. We've gotten the note to sound like something, but it's way too high. It's, it's way above G. It needs to come, it needs to come down. Um, it's back and forth and back and forth, because everything you do to one note is going to have some effect on the ones around it. In this rig over here, these two tuners are, you know, do what my, my ear can't do very precisely, which is, you know, make sure that it's exactly uh, tuned to a, a certain pitch that so that all the pans will be in tune together. Well, this one here is number 432, and I didn't start numbering until after about 10 years, so I've made maybe maybe twice that many altogether. Instruments, you know, some, some instruments have two pans, some instruments have three, some have six, depending what they are. Started a little steel band up here in 1974, the Atlantic Clarion Steel Band which is still going strong. Nigel, my son, runs it now. I remember my dad coming home from one of his sailing trips down the Caribbean, and he brought back with him a little tourist pan. And it was one of these little steel drums that are painted up with palm trees around the edges. And it had, you know, several notes on it, which made up a scale, and you could play simple little tunes on it. But he was fascinated by it. Uh, in the sense that he wanted to figure out how to make them. A dream that we had when we went to Trinidad and saw the scene down there of all these steel bands out on the street and everybody out jumping up and having a great time to the music was, why can't we do this in Maine? You know, why can't we come back here and get, get people out on the street jumping around? Well, Mainers aren't exactly like that by nature. Well, you know, it has a lot to do with Carl. You know, it's just a sort of an idea, kind of a an idea that he had that if it you know it worked down in, in Trinidad, why couldn't it work here? It's exactly what we kind of imagined when we were down there in Trinidad. So the community band Flash, now about 35 people, we've been playing for quite a while. <clears throat> They've got pretty good. The highlight of the street dances has to be playing to an audience that ranges in age from about two weeks old to a 94-year-old lady who was up there dancing to one of our street dances. And the music grabs the people, all of these people of different ages in different ways. It just began to mushroom because I think it, it, there's something almost magical about the instrument, the sound, and when
when you put it together in large numbers and you get the power of all these pans sounding together. It augments life in general. I think it's something that you can take with you and you never know where either you're going to find a pan or where music is going to come into your life. The fact that it is such a big sound, especially when you put it together as a band, that it's, it's moving, you know, you hear this sound and it actually like physically moves you and it has this, has a, has a real power behind it. And I, I think the instrument is on its way, it's, it's, uh, it's a, just like I say, it's a magical thing and, and people can't resist it and, and it's so good for, well, I was going to say kids, but everybody.